We just changed out the background in this image using Photoshop. Then we took it into Cricut and did a print and cut larger than nine and a quarter by six and a half. And then we sublimated it on a cotton t-shirt using glitter heat transfer vinyl. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we get a request from a patron. Helen wants to know, how do you change out the background of an image? Like if there's a pattern. And I'm gonna show you and her how to do it in Photoshop today. Yes, as we've begun our sublimation videos, we've got a lot of requests, a lot of comments, a lot of questions, and this was a big one. Every time you see these sublimation images, they switch them up, like that mom life messy bun, those aviator sunglasses, switching them up for the seasons, or have them say different things. We're gonna show you how to change out that background and update and change your sublimation image and create your own sublimation image. Yeah, Garrett's we're gonna, gonna just show you. Start fresh. Yeah. Make new. And this video is chock full of good information. We're also gonna show you how to a slice and design space so that you can do a print and cut larger than six and a half by nine and a quarter that's and a little, that's a little restrictive so we'll show you how to go big and we're going to show you how to do some sublimating on cotton t-shirts using heat transfer vinyl of the glitter kind step one we're going to gather all of our supplies we needed photoshop that was one and we also needed some glitter vinyl some butcher paper, some high heat tape, sublimation paper, some cotton tees. Then we needed the Cricut heat press, a sublimation printer, and the Cricut. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Pretty much. <laughs> Step two, and now we're gonna create our image, but not with our hands, with Photoshop. And I'm sure you can do this same or similar technique using other graphics applications. But uh, I like Photoshop. Yeah. That's my go-to. That's his go-to. It's been using a long time. So I'm going to give you a little peek into the kitchen and I'll meet you there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with a fresh Photoshop document. I already went out to the internet and found this flower PNG that we're going to use to replace the background. I'm going to drag that onto our new document. A boop. I like Harry Potter. My favorite tool is also the magic wand. This is a tool that selects everything based on a color. I selected the light gray and now I'm going to go up to the top, back to the select menu, similar. Now this should select everything on that image that is similar to this color. Now if we try to delete the background just using our delete button, it won't work because this is a smart object and a smart object is not directly editable. It's technically linked to this project right now. So to get around that, we're gonna go over and get our eraser tool and then click on the background, which will bring up a little pop-up that asks us if we want to rasterize the smart object. Of course we do, because this will embed it into our document and allow us to edit it and change out the background. Now I can just hit that delete key and get rid of all the background, all of that light gray. I'm gonna go up and grab my marquee tool and just click somewhere to deselect the selection. Looking good, let's go get a background to throw behind here. I already found this flag, right click, a copy image. Back over to my favorite tool, the magic wand. We're gonna select the out, oop, I need to select a layer. Now I'm gonna select the outside of the flower, back up top, select, inverse. This will flip what's actually selected. So now the flower is selected. Now I'm gonna go up to edit, paste, paste into. Now this actually creates a mask, leaving the image that we just pasted into it untouched. Let's put the frame of the flower back over top of the flag so we have that flower look to it. Zoom out. Let's shrink the flag. Looks pretty good. Uh, let's zoom in and tweak this a little bit. All right, I wanna to try to get a little more of the flag. Maybe a little bigger. All right, what do you think? Looks good. Yeah, looks good. Now when we created the mask, it left the original image back there, the flag untouched. Now we can mess with the mask. See, here's the image, here's the mask. Now if we select the mask piece and go over to the paintbrush, we can determine how much is shown and how much is hidden. If we use the white, 
it shows more. Now, if we flip it to the black, it takes it away. Control Z. Now that gives you a lot of leeway. You can play with that flag back there and give it a ton of different looks. Now it's time to add the little saying. Kim gave me a mock-up, she drew it up, and she gave me these fonts to use. Avango and Breathe Press. So I'm gonna mock this up real quick. I'll speed through this. I'm sure you don't wanna watch me do fonts. I'm gonna hide the flag so that I can tweak these a little bit. Move it around. All right, everything looks good. Now I'm gonna flatten all of the words. And to do that, we're gonna hold shift and select all the layers with words on them. Go to the layers menu and then merge layers or control E. This way we can give everything an outer glow later on and nothing will overlap and look weird. Back to the wand tool. We're gonna select outside of the flower. I wanna give this thing a little white bleed to it. So when I try to cut it on the Cricut, so I'm gonna give myself a new layer. I'm gonna drag this layer down underneath everything. And also let's get rid of that background. Oops, uh, let's close that and go back up to edit. And we're gonna go down to stroke. And I want this bleed to be white. So FFFFFF. All right, let's make this bleed. Um, 20 points. Let's see what that looks like. I need to zoom in. All right, let's see. Uh, a little thick. Let's control Z. Undo that. Back to edit. Stroke. Let's try 15 this time. All right, looks way better. I can't see the text. Let's make that stand out a little bit better. Back over to the marquee tool. Let's click off to unselect everything. Double click on the layer with the words and let's give this thing an outer glow, make it pop. All right, looks good. All right, what do you think? Time to export it. We're just gonna export this as a PNG. After looking at this a little bit more, I think it's looking a little dark, so I'm gonna lighten up the flag a little bit try to make it pop when we go to export it. So I'm gonna go over to the move tool, select the layer that I wanna lighten, then I'm gonna go up to image, adjustments, and then levels. Then inside levels, I'm gonna use the little white dropper tool and select the darker part of the white in the flag. Boom, look at that popping. All right, let's re-export this thing. Step three, we're gonna import our image that we just created into design space and I'm gonna show you how to do the printed cut larger than six and a half by nine and a quarter. We're gonna be using some slicing tool, huh? So we're going back into the kitchen. <laughs> Here we are in our Cricut design space with our blank canvas. First thing we're gonna do is upload the image we just created. We're gonna browse and select the PNG file. We'll go ahead and select complex to be safe. Hit continue. Here there's no modifications needed. Garrett did a great job creating the image, so we'll just hit continue. And then of course we're doing a print thin cut. You would almost always want to bring your images in as a print thin cut so that you have the option to cut or to print. So we're going to select print thin cut, click upload. Now we have our image uploaded, so we'll go ahead and select the image and then over here in the bottom right, insert images. And then we'll want to make this uh, the largest size possible that we can for our print and cut. So we're going to go ahead and select the width as 9.24 because we're going to slice this image in, right across the center here. So let's move this to give us some working space. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is duplicate the images. Because we're going to slice this, we're gonna want an overlap. We're gonna create two, version of the, two versions of the image and then we'll create a third version that we'll use for 
cutting. So we'll duplicate it twice. The back image here, I'll select the bottom layer right here on the right. We're gonna go up here to the top left and change that to a cut basic. Now that will be our vinyl layer. We can go ahead and hide that for now. And then we're gonna hide one of our image layers. Oh, before we do that, let's go ahead and align them all. Align them, so we're gonna select all, align, center, so that these images are in the same place and we know we're slicing them correctly. We're gonna hide one of them, insert our shapes box, We're gonna size this to nine and a half. You know it will cover it. We're gonna unlock it and make it by six. That's about half. All right, so we're gonna slice this in the most inconspicuous place, about halfway. So we're gonna do this between the word free and between the word because, at least as close as we can get. So we're gonna put our little box here over free again we're going to want to overlap so we're going to make this one a little bit bigger and we're going to make the bottom one a little bit bigger so we have that overlap room so we're going to drag this down just a little bit right here and then select all and we'll click slice and then we'll go ahead and delete the the, the box and the cut area. So we deleted our box, we delete our gray cut piece here. We don't need those two pieces and now we have two separate images. So we're gonna control Z and then we're going to delete the bottom half because that's the shorter half and we're not gonna use that piece of this image. So let's delete that one. We're gonna hide that layer unhide the other layer and create another shape. So again, we're gonna add another square and this time we're gonna select the bottom half. So again, we're gonna change our image, we're gonna unlock this and we're gonna do nine and a half by six. And then we're gonna drag this. So this one we want a little bit into the word free, again, because we want that overlap. So we're gonna do it about right there. We're gonna say select all, slice right here in the bottom right. We can delete the box, delete the sliced box. And now we have our two images. This is the one we don't need, so we're gonna hit delete on this one. So now we're gonna unhide both of them. And there we go, we have our full image. And we're gonna unhide our basic cut. And next step is go ahead and make it. Now, because this is a sublimation, you'll want to mirror your image. And then both print and cuts will be mirrored as well as the basic cut because that is heat transfer vinyl and you also want to mirror that one. So as you go through, you can select each one and select mirror. And then select continue. All right, we'll select our sublimation printer here. It's our Epson, keep the bleed on and click print. This is our sublimation printer. <laughs> I had the wrong printer selected. Good thing I caught that. And select print. Now we have our images printed. Both of our print and cuts here. This is gonna to come together like this. And now we're gonna put them back on our mats and we're gonna do our cut. Now, little tip here. The first thing the Cricut's gonna do is look for this black line so it knows where its box is. And if it's having a hard time finding it, little tip, put a flashlight in there, give it some extra light so it can find the borders here. That's the first thing it's gonna do is scan for that and then it's gonna cut out your image. Best tip ever. Now that we've completed our print, we'll wanna go ahead and cut our image. So we'll select our base material as notebook paper and 
then click the flashing go button. Next step, we're gonna cut out our glitter vinyl. We're gonna lay this face down on our mat so that we can cut out our outline. And then for our basic cut for our heat transfer vinyl, we'll wanna change the material to glitter iron on. Images already mirrored, and we'll just hit the flashing go button. All right, we have our sublimation pieces all cut out with our print and cut. We have our glitter outline cut. Everything is mirrored. Now we're gonna put it on the t-shirt. Well, next step we're gonna we're gonna tape this together. All so right. gotta line up our design. Right. So now all we have to do is we're gonna use this white piece of paper here so I can really see it. And you can see through and I'm gonna line up. There's a little bit of an overlap in here. So I'm just going to line up the lines and make sure that they're together. And we're gonna use scotch tape for this. We're gonna use scotch tape for this because when we did some tape together for one of the other sublimation videos we just yeah. recently did, you could see that the heat didn't transfer through the heat transfer tape. Or it might have heated up too much. Something. The color was different. Where the I tape could literally was. see the piece of tape. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna use this, and I think it'll hold the heat. So sure. we're gonna test that out. Is it all good? I'm gonna. Well, let me see. I'm not quite sure yet. lined up pretty good. I don't think anybody will notice. If anybody gets too close, I'll be like, whoa! Back up. It's private space. This famous line. Personal area. Personal space. Alright, our next step will be we're going to do a quick press of the Glitter HTV to get it on here. Let's just do it. going to press it for like 10 seconds. Let's give it a quick press to get all the wrinkles out. Yeah, this thing's a mess. I had this rolled moisture? up on the floor. <laughs> what? It no, barely it looks like it. It does look like it. It does barely look like it. Alright. You ready? We're going to get a, a quick ironing. Just like three to five seconds. Yeah, hold up. This isn't it's enough to get the moisture out and any wrinkles right. out. It's, hold on. I see some terrible wrinkles on the inside. You probably should have ironed it before we flipped it. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, you want You can give it a quick press now. Give it one over here. I don't know why it's so wrinkly. <laughs> it's the wrinkliest shit ever. You saw me take the sticker off of it, so it is new. It's not like I pulled it from my drawer. Straight out of the bag. <laughs> I probably should have uh, pre-washed these. I would pre-wash it in the future. Well, a lot of them are already pre-washed, aren't they? They say they are, but are they? Are they? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter if I do this before I, uh... That's really, yeah, the paper is really either. for sublimation, but we're going to start with our HTV. All right, so... All right, so we're gonna fold this and make sure we find the center of our image. Now we're gonna line that up with the fold on our shirt. Give me your three fingers. Right there, right there. All right, I got it. 385, oh, do we need a yeah. butcher paper? 385 for like 10 seconds just to get it to stick to the shirt. Right, just a quick pre press because then we need to sublimate it. 10.
All right. We'll let it cool down a second. Cool it down. You got to slow it down. Ooh, cool down. Before you sublimate. Cool enough? Yeah. All right. I'm afraid it might be a little crooked. Darn it. You have another one? I'm not a t shirt pro. <laughs> Going in. Yet. All right, just lining this up on the glitter vinyl. If all of our calculations were correct. You want a little heat, heat tape? Yeah. I can't reach it to A little high heat tape on there. Although it's already starting to stick to it. Just on the edge, just on the edge. Let's catch this edge. Okay, get it like up there, it's white. Yeah, don't can't move it now. All right, we're in. Now we're going in for a full 385 and a full 60 seconds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm, Did it cool down a little bit? Lean on here. One, three, two, one. Shazam! <laughs> All right, how do you think it turned out? I think it's great. I think it's gonna look beautiful. Let's take a peek. Oh, the masking tape stuck to it. Hold on. Yeah, just pull it. Bam! That, wow, that looks came good. Out. Nice. Look at that. That looks so good. So good. Oh, you want to see? <laughs> Check it out. Cotton tea sublimation. Pretty cool, huh? The reason that the glitter works is because all these little crystals are polyester crystals. So I don't know Poly if they're Polyacrylic work. or something? Yeah, there's some kind of polymer. Yeah. They're made of a polymer, which the sublimation dye will bond to. So that's why it works with the glitter HTV. I hope you can see how shiny and cool this looks. It looks, I, the colors are just so bright yes. and they pop so much. This is gonna definitely be my 4th of July shirt. I love it. You guys follow it along. Show me what your shirt looks like. Helen, I want you to let us know if you were able to change your background and your mom life image. Yeah. Show us what you made by changing a background. What did you make in Photoshop? How did your sublimation come out? What does it look on, like on your heat transfer vinyl that's glitter? Did you try it with rainbow? I bet you it would look cool with a different color glitter vinyl. <laughs> Definitely. And again, a big thanks to our patrons. I love you guys. You guys make it possible to do what we do and come up with new ideas and designs and all kinds of great goodies. But. Looks like we're about out of time. So if you're not going to join us over on Patreon for our after show, I will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, make it again. Oh man, again, we got to stop doing these soft things. I have nothing to balance. Yeah, you want to balance the heat yeah. press. I don't balance this hot. <laughs> I'm just going to balance this glitter. Ooh, can I do two of them? Let's go eat.